Welcome to Nancy Wilson's Femina Podcast. If you've been listening and enjoying the podcast, we'd ask that you please leave a rating and a review as it helps the podcast reach outside of our pocket of faithful listeners because we want to bless the most people possible. Thanks. Hello, welcome to the Femina Podcast number three. I'm Nancy Wilson. Today I'm going to visit with you about the difference between being and doing. So the thing we need to understand is that all of our doing comes out of our being. So what do I mean by this? Well, a good tree bears good fruit. It can't help it. A bramble bush can try with all its might to produce apples. It just can't. It's not possible because the apples are contrary to its whole nature as a bramble bush. And so we, you know, before we are put right with Christ, we are like the bramble bush. And, you know, we want to give ourselves credit for fine works, or we want to try to produce impressive apples on our own, but we just simply cannot until God changes us into apple trees, if you get my point. Um, I was converted when I was in college. But prior to that, you know, just a few months, uh, several months really before I was converted, I was really trying to change myself into something else. I was that bramble bush being frustrated that all I could produce were brambles, you know, and it was not pretty. And things weren't going very well. And I knew I was very unhappy. And so I kept trying different things like, well, maybe I need new friends. You know, that would be, (laughs) that will change me. (sighs) Wrong. Um, I thought I needed to just reinvent myself as though, as though we can do that, you know. Um, And of course, I couldn't do that. But I tried different things. And now, of course, they're very funny things. I thought this is back in the 70s when I was a college student. You know, I signed up for a wilderness survival class, which was totally not me at all. But, you know, I was just looking for something, like trying to change myself. Maybe that's, maybe that's who I am, a wilderness survival woman. Um, God in his mercy canceled that class due to lack of interest. And, and, uh, then I signed up for Transcendental Meditation, having no clue what that was. But I thought, okay, now I've really found something. This is it. And when I tried to recruit my roommate to join me in it, she said, why should I? You haven't changed. And so that was really an illuminating moment for me because she spoke the truth there to me. And I knew it was so true and that I didn't have the power to change myself, and I couldn't even fake it. I couldn't tie, you know, apples on the bramble bush and trick her or fool anyone, including myself. And so my my roommate, I bless her to this day for those words, she could see it. She knew it was a big fake thing. And so I, that was just a, maybe a few months before my conversion. And God certainly used that to get me ready. But an amazing thing happened when I finally, when I finally came to Christ, an amazing thing happened. And that was, I was changed. And I didn't do it. It, he did it. And the change was visible to me and it was visible to other people. And I really was a new person. And apples started appearing on what had been a pretty miserable little bramble bush. So my point in this is just to, to start this little uh, conversation about works and being and doing, I became, I was, now I could be an apple tree. My nature had been changed. And so all my doing before couldn't change me, couldn't, it couldn't trick anyone into thinking I was something I wasn't. And I was only deceiving myself. And so I was made into a new person. Glory to God. (laughs) And what a huge transformation took place. Now, um, that day that I surrendered to Christ 
was just the beginning. And and Colossians 2, 6 says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. So I've been walking in him now for more than 40 years. And how did I receive him? And I received him by faith. And so that's how I'm supposed to walk in him now. The same way I received him. The same demeanor that I had when I received him as Lord. Now, some of you have grown up loving Jesus as your Lord and Savior from as early as you can remember. You don't remember the day where there was this huge transformation. And my husband's fond of saying, and it really helped me in thinking about this, you don't have to know what time the sun rose, but you do need to know it's up now. And so if you know that you're a Christian now, you don't have to feel bad if you don't remember exactly what time it happened or where you were, like I do. I can tell you where I was and what day it was. But my children can't. They don't really remember because it's just they've grown up in the faith. And, but they have to walk in him the same way I do, which is by faith. How did I receive Christ? Well, I received him as Lord. I surrendered to him and to his lordship over me by faith. I couldn't see him, but I believed. And that's when the transformation took place. So how am I to walk now as a Christian woman since that moment? Well, the same exact way, by faith. I'm to walk day by day, surrender to him, trusting him, believing him, calling him Lord, just like I did at the beginning. And I'm a new person in Christ. I have a new nature. So now I can live accordingly like an apple tree. He brings the fruit. I don't. Um, Just like the little apple tree in my father-in-law's backyard, it just keeps on producing fruit. And it's not striving out there. It is just being who it is. And, you know, that little fruit tree, that little apple tree has been there a long time. And it's looking pretty gnarly. But it's still producing all these beautiful flowers in the spring. And then it's producing all these apples in the fall and so forth. And then it just, you know, we we start over again every year. We just start over again. And so... The thing I I want to encourage you to do is to meditate on this, not try to pedal your bike faster and faster trying to bear fruit, but to trust God and realizing if he has transformed you into a new person, you are his workmanship, as it says in Ephesians 2.10, created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works for apples. (laughs) You're created in Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. As apple trees, as Christians, we acknowledge we're his workmanship. He fashioned us. He has given us a job, and that job is to walk in the good works he has prepared for us in advance. So my day is already loaded with good works. And I don't know what all of them are. My job is to walk through my day by faith, trusting God, looking for those good works he has already uh, he's already prepared for me. So, we don't have to worry about the day ahead of us because all these works are just waiting for us. He's prepared them especially for me and especially for you. So we walk by faith. And these things, mysteriously, as we walk, God just produces this amazing fruit in our lives. And it is, it's astounding. (laughs) It truly is astounding, especially if I look back and remember how I was trying so hard to do all these things, to, to create apples on my own. And what a joke that was. So what can get in the way now? As we are walking by faith, as we are going ahead, like I'm walking today the same exact way I was walking 40 years ago, by faith, trusting God, can anything get in the way? Oh yeah, oh yes. Sin always gets in the way. Sin is the great destroyer of 
fruit. Yes, it destroys a lot of things like our joy, um, our peace, etc. But walking by faith implies that we're going to confess our sins as we go. We are not going to let them pile up and then do a once a month cleanup or once a year cleanup. It's like, no, we're going to put things right, take care of things as we go, as we're walking by faith. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He puts us right as we confess our sins. We're put right again. And when you, as you take responsibility to confess your sins as you go immediately, then you're going to be walking in the joy of the Lord all the time. And you're going to be walking by faith all the time. If I can just plug here a little book that you've all heard of, of course, and that's Pilgrim's Progress. And I don't know how many times I've read it. I, when I was teaching at ninth grade at Logos School, we read it every year. And it was always a, just a blessing for me to go through that again. It's so uh, helpful. It's such a great picture of the Christian life and how easily we can get off the track, how we get off the walk, how to get back on the path, the right path, and stay there. He's faithful and just and will forgive us our sins, cleanse us, and put things right. So I hope you see that by our own do-gooding, we can't transform ourselves. We just, it's impossible. And so knowing that God has done that transformation and that he has fruit planned for you to walk in, you don't have to get stalled out in your Christian life because you don't know what to do next. We walk by faith. The fruit is his doing. It's not our doing. So we walk. We do the next thing by faith. And we don't have to double think it. When I was a brand new Christian, I remember standing (laughs) at a traffic light and saying, Lord, you know, should I go right or should I go left? I mean, how am I supposed to know what you want me to do? And now I just laugh at this, but I think it's it's a good question. But the answer is, will you walk by faith? Which way do you want to go? You're trusting God, just go, do the next thing. We can't get stalled out at every street corner trying to get the will of God for the next step. We walk by faith. We trust him. We go forward. Um, When I was a young mother of three little people, I remember a moment when I thought maybe I was missing something great that God wanted me to do. And as I recall, I was washing the dishes, and I thought, Lord, if I could just ask you, you know, is there something you want me to do? I mean, something else, something other than this? And something important like leading a Bible study or something. And you know what that was. That was like just a real thin cover-up for a little discontent happening right there. Like, you know, something more important than washing the dishes. But I do remember that I thought, well, I know what God would say. He would say, Nancy, I want you to do the dishes. But I thought, but Lord, you know, isn't there something else more grandiose? Like something else more impressive you want me doing? And I thought, I know what he would say. He would say, yes, I want you to do them cheerfully. (laughs) And it was just such a great moment. And yes, he wants us walking cheerfully in the good works he's planned for us. Guess what, ladies? I'm still doing the dishes. I'm still doing the dishes. And I still need to do them cheerfully. These are good works he's planned for me every day. And we don't want to categorize these good works into man-made, you know, uh, ideas like, well, these are just the mundane, boring, unimportant works. These are the really impressive works over here. It's like, oh, no, he wants us to walk cheerfully and faithfully in all the good works he's planned for us and not the ones we've planned for us. And that includes those dishes and many other daily tasks that are not impressive looking uh, from the eye of the flesh, but with the eye of faith, they are. I mean, sometimes when I go in to make up, Doug and I live with my father-in-law with his dad, who's 92, and it is a joy, and it is a blessing taking care of him. But sometimes I remind myself, whose bed is this I'm making right now? It's Jesus' bed. (laughs) It's 
th- these are Jesus' dirty dishes. And then it, doesn't that give us such a different perspective on these daily mundane tasks that we have to do when we set our mind and heart to do them unto the Lord cheerfully? And then he does that work of transforming these little things into beautiful apples, <laughs> into good fruit and good work. He transforms them and he transforms us. And the end of it, I thought of Proverbs 31, the last verse and a half, says, But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. And isn't that such a beautiful picture? So all these things you are doing day in, day out, the things that may not look that impressive, don't look like great works. If they're done cheerfully under the Lord, he transforms them. He says, give her the fruit of her hands. Let her works praise her in the gates. And you know, what a beautiful end for all these things that we are offering to him. Thank you for joining me today and blessings on your day.